Hi everyone, welcome to Python Tutorials with a special focus on image processing. In the last video, we looked at boosting, gradient boosting, and uh, we also had a brief look at XGBoost and LGBM, two libraries in Python uh, that are based on gradient boosting. Now in this video, let's put this to test. Let's actually uh, perform semantic image segmentation using random forest XGBoost and LightGBM and see uh, which one wins. And the criteria is both uh, speed and accuracy. And for accuracy, we have already established that intersection over union is a better metric than overall accuracy. So let's just focus on IOU metric and then see which one wins here. Okay, now just a quick uh, note here. Again, what we are talking about is following exactly the same process we have done in quite a few of our previous videos, which is using our input image and corresponding labels extracting features from the input image and uh, fitting a model to these features and using the model for prediction. And the place where we are going to swap the models are exactly uh, while we are fitting it, right? I mean, here is where we are going to use random forest gradient boosting, both XGBoost and LightGBM. So let's jump into the code and uh, start our test. I should mention that the first part of this code is going to be exactly the same as what we have done in the last couple of videos, right? We start by importing the right libraries. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we are going to import all the 10 images that we are using for training and extract features, starting with the pixel value itself as a feature and capture it in a data frame as a column and then extract features sequentially, like initially uh, Gabor features and then uh, edge detection. And uh, we are going to apply a few of these and uh, the responses that we get, which is the filtered images, we are going to convert them into single vectors and then add them as uh, columns as part of our data frame. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. This is going to take uh, a few seconds. So let's initiate this and then start our discussion, continue the discussion, I should say. And let's end right here. So at the end of this, once everything is done, as you can see, it's reading uh, each image, extracting the Gabor and all of these other filters, adding it to our data frame. So at the end, in my image data set, our uh, data frame, we should have about 10 million pixels and 41 or 42 columns, like depending on how many features we are actually generating. I believe we are generating 41 features and uh, also tagging along the image names. So we should have 42 columns. So let's go ahead and look at uh, image data set quickly. As a sanity check, as you can see, 10.2 million pixels or uh, rows, each row corresponding to pixel, 42 columns. And the second column is image name, and we can drop that because it has nothing to do with any of our data. It's just a way I'm keeping track of what pixels are coming from what images. Uh, we're going to read our masks very similar way. Obviously, in this case, we are not extracting features. It's just a mask uh, telling us what the ground truth is. So this should be a pretty fast operation. So it's done right there. So now if you look at your mask, our mask also, mask data set, should have 10.2 million uh, rows with two columns. One is the label value, the other one is the mask name. Now let's go ahead and combine these uh, image data set and mask data set. In fact, I'm concatenating it, putting them together into one single data frame by combining, uh, by adding these uh, along the axis column, uh, sorry, along the uh, axis equals to one, which is the columns. Now I have a data set, if I go back, I have a data set with 44 columns, right? Now, and 10.2 million uh, pixels, but not all of these pixels are useful in my case because I only labeled partially, you know, with, uh, within these images. So of 10.2 million, I probably have 300,000 plus uh, useful pixels. Everything else is unlabeled. All my unlabeled pixels are given a value of zero. So the next step for me is to drop all of these values uh, where the pixel value is zero because I only want pixel values one, two, three, four because these are my actual labels that I want to work with. So uh, now I have a data set. If you look at the data set up here with 372,000 uh, rows. So that's the only uh, pixels. These are the only pixels that I labeled manually. And by the way, you can use www.appear.com for labeling your own images, A-P-E-E-R. 
Okay, now that we have our data set that has all of our data, let's go ahead and define our X and Y, okay? X is uh, all the columns except for these three because they have nothing to do uh, with uh, our data, meaning uh, these are not our X values. So let's go ahead and drop it. And our Y is uh, uh, the ground truth, right? Which is our label values, our pixel values uh, uh, from the masks. So this is my Y. Now you'll realize that when you look at Y, uh, the, the pixel values, we dropped zero because they're coming from background, which means our pixel values are going from one, two, three, four, representing four uh, regions in our, uh, in, our, in our images. But most libraries, when you, when you say you're working on uh, multi-class problems, they assume that your classes start with zero, one, two, three. Okay, I, I mentioned this a couple of times in my previous videos, but it's worth repeating. So to, to make sure, you know, uh, to make sure our labels start with zero, you can either subtract one from your label or just go ahead and re-encode it, right? So uh, by using label encoder, you're basically saying, okay, these are my labels, go ahead and re-encode them as zero, one, two, three. And in this example, my labels are one, two, three. Your pixel values from your semantic segmentation could be I don't know, 75, 82, some other numbers, but this is a good, good idea to actually uh, redo those or uh, changing your pixel values or label values to zero, one, two, three. Okay, that's exactly what we have done here. Now we are all set. Now let's go ahead and split this into training and testing data. So finally, we have everything we need to test our random forest, to test our XGBoost, and to test our light GBM. Okay, so we have X train X, uh, and Y train, X test and Y test, right? Training, we are going to use it for fitting a model. Testing, we're going to use it to test how good our model is. Um, okay, so let's start with random forest classifier. And we have done this uh, uh, quite a few times, so this should not come as a surprise to any of you. So I'm going to use random forest classifier from scikit-learn.ensemble. And by the way, I added some notes up here all the way. For XGBoost, it's available in a library called XGBoost. So go ahead and pip install this. Okay, so go ahead and type pip install here. And LightGBM is available in pip install LightGBM. So uh, no tricks, both of these worked very well for me. So I didn't have to do anything other than just pip installing these two, okay? Now you'll have all three. So random forest, like I just mentioned, nothing, it's it's part of scikit-learn. So we are going to just use the, ran, um, the standard random forest from scikit-learn. And let's uh, uh, instantiate that with uh, 50 estimators, like 50 trees, and let's uh, pin the random state to 42. So every time we do the experiment, we get predictable results. And uh, let's go ahead and fit it. Again, let's uh, run these lines of code. Again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to fit the model and uh, all of these models and trying to compare our execution time and accuracy. Well, for accuracy, we're going to use intersection over union. So let's go ahead and run these. And I'm going to pause this video because this, from previous experience, we know this is going to take at least one minute, okay? So let's run this and I'm gonna pa uh, pause the video. And uh, uh, as soon as this is done, let's go ahead and uh, switch to XGBoost and LightGBM, okay? Okay, so after one minute, nine seconds, we are done with random forest and let's do exactly the same exercise with the other two. But first, let's go ahead and predict on our test using the trained model that we just, uh, that we just created. And let's uh, look at our accuracy right now. So the accuracy is 95.25%, right? Again, exactly pretty much the same accuracy we got the last time we ran this. And here is some code to calculate the intersection over union. And if I remember correctly, class two should have 76.5% right there. And in the end, let's summarize all of these together. Okay, let's now switch to XGBoost. This is the first time I'm talking about XGBoost. So let's go through this line by line, which is again, very similar to random forest. We're going to uh, import XGBoost as XGB and within XGBoost, you can have like a classifier, regressor and so on. Obviously this is uh, you know a classification problem, not a regression problem. We are trying to classify each pixel. So I'm going to use XGB classifier and you can, imp uh, you can input a lot of parameters in here like learning rate, for example, because it's using gradient boosting. Right, you can input the learning rate. So I'm I'm just using default values for now. You can further tune these by using uh, the hyperparameters that you can tune. That's the point. Okay, let's define uh, our XGB model just like we have done. Uh, let's go ahead and import XGBoost. Apparently, we haven't imported that. 
And once it's there, uh, let's just like random forest, let's instantiate this. And now we can do that. There you go. And now let's go ahead and fit it. This is very similar to random forest, like I mentioned. So let's go ahead and do this and print out the execution time. I'll still pause this video this because this may be up to a minute. Uh, we'll see. So let's run it. Okay, so this one took 54 seconds. Again, not that much faster. I mean, it's uh, the previous one was one minute, uh, nine seconds, I believe, right? So we got like about 16, 17 seconds right there, which is okay, uh, I should say. Um, and if you have lots of data, it adds up eventually. So let's go ahead and predict this on our test data. And let's also print out the accuracy 95.5 i don't know if it's more you know how it compares with random forest let's keep that uh until the last uh until the end uh, let's skip this uh okay let's go ahead and i thought of skipping but i want to print everything at the end so we kind of focus on uh, uh focus on uh, comparing these uh, at the same time okay now let's uh look at light gbm Again, from LightGBM, uh, I'm actually importing LightGBM as LGB and within LightGBM, and the way you kind of define this LightGBM is slightly different from XGBoost and Random Forest. The way you do this is you actually first define your, uh, your data set. In this case, my data set is, I'm just calling like DTrain. And uh, now you define lgb.dataset with what your input X values are and what your label is, okay? So I'm defining this first. And then I can, I'm ready to switch down here, but then I'm defining a few parameters. I'm defining learning rate as 0.05, my boosting type as DART. Uh, you can actually use, for example, boosting type as gradient boosting. And uh, my objective in this case is multi-class. And what type of uh, loss function do you want to use for multi-class? Again, uh, remember, if this is regression, you're going to use mean squared error. But this is uh, this is multi-class. This is classification. So log loss for sure. And this is multi-log loss because we are using multi-class classification. Number of leaves, 100. As I mentioned in my last tutorial, LGB, light GBM can overfit if you're not careful. So let's go ahead and uh, leave the number of uh, leaves to 100, which apparently seems to be uh, okay, I mean, I've done a few tests and uh, maximum depth as 10. Mac I recommend not going higher than 20 in general as a rule of thumb and number of classes we're dealing with is four. So let's just define all of these parameters that go as input into our light GBM when it fits this. So now you can see light GBM is basically lgb.train. Okay, train on what? On using these parameters on my training data and 50 is number of iterations, okay? So stop after number uh, 50 iterations. That's what we are defining here. And then let's look at the execution time. I'm not going to pause the video because I think this is uh, not, this is a pretty fast, uh, pretty fast uh, operation right there. And you'll see that, you see right there, five seconds. So obviously I would like to use LGBM, light GBM, if, uh, if my accuracy and all the, you know, uh, uh, intersection over union is similar to what I get from random forest or XGBoost, right? So let's uh, go ahead and predict on our X test data right there. And uh, let's go ahead and do this. If you actually do, sorry, when you do this prediction on LGB model, unlike unlike XGBoost and Random Forest, when you actually predict this, let's look at the prediction. This is worth pausing for a second to think about this. If you look at my prediction from Random Forest, it, I have 74,000, uh, oh, sorry, 74,413, and then you can see the values right there. If you look at prediction using XGBoost, same number, you can see the values right there. But if you look at uh, 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 LGBoost, it's same number of data points, obviously, same number of test data, but then it's giving me four channels. It's giving me four, uh, a dimension of four. What that means is for each of these classes that we're trying to classify, it's giving me probabilities. So I need to go through each of these and go ahead and uh, 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 convert that into a, uh, into a prediction which is, okay, it's not just probability, of all the probabilities, which one has the highest value and convert that into that value, right? So that's exactly what this line is trying to do. So when I do that, if you look at my uh, prediction LGB, now I have the same, uh, same dimensions as the other two. That's the just extra step. So as you can see, LGB has slightly different behavior in terms of how you implement it, but eventually it's one other tool that you have at your disposal when it comes to uh, fitting your model.
or classifying. Okay, so now let's look at the accuracy. Again, 95.3, that's not bad. I mean, as long as it's not below 90%, because the previous two gave us 95.5-ish. This is 95.3. So obviously, overall accuracy, this is uh, not as good as the other two. But let's go ahead and summarize everything after I run these lines. Okay, so let's clear the screen and just summarize things. So first of all, when it comes to execution time, which one is faster? I think we know the answer to this. So when it comes to execution, this is random forest, one minute, nine seconds, 54 seconds for XGBoost and LGBM is only five seconds. So this, is, this beats the other two. This is like definite 10 times faster almost exactly 10 times faster than XGBoost. Now, how does that translate into actual accuracy? So accuracy 95.25 using Random Forest, overall accuracy 95.5 using XGBoost and 95.3 using LGBM. So if the, if the question is between Random Forest or LGBM, I'm okay using LGBM because I'm getting similar accuracy uh, at, at more than 10 times faster. Okay, and finally, let's look at mean IOU. In fact, I recommend you plot uh, or summarize uh, individual IOU for each class and see if there is any compromises going on there. But let's just look at the mean overall IOU. So for when it comes to mean IOU, 91.2 for random forest, 91.7 for XGBoost, and 91.3 for LGBM. So here is my take on this. If it is between random forest and LGBM, the choice is simple. LGBM all the time because you're getting much better accuracy, much better IOU at at least 10 times faster speed. Okay, and if it is between XGBoost and LGBM, uh, I I would be okay with LGBM because it's it's doing things much, uh, it's training much faster. Prediction wise, by the way, this is only training time. Prediction wise, I believe all, all of these should be uh, very fast, okay? Uh, again, that would be another exercise that uh, would be nice to do. But uh, when it comes to training, if training time is important, then uh, I would use LGBM. But if you're going to train something for your research project that you're going to use over and over and over again, XGBoost probably is the best choice because it is worth putting up the uh, initial training time ahead of time so you can use this great model over and over and over and over. Okay, so I hope again you found this uh, tutorial to be useful. In the next tutorial, let's cover another topic. And in fact, in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about, okay, we have all of these features, like 43, uh, 41 features. Do we really need all of these 41? One other way of speeding up your, your, your training is by actually selecting only the features that matter and not train on the other ones. So please stay tuned for that video and uh, subscribe to this channel so you get notified whenever that video gets uploaded. Thank you very much.